Hello and all, my name's John Clare, this is John Starkart, and you are very welcome. Okay, today's piece in my Miscellaneous Dark Creatures series, shall we say. Uh, the piece I'm talking about today is a piece called Kraken. Funny enough, I mean, I started this piece about four years ago, uh, sometime around the tail end of 2019. And for whatever reason, I never finished it. I don't know, maybe I got bored with it, maybe I got started on something else, I don't know, I couldn't tell you to be honest. I remember uh, recently anyway, I was uh, doing a bit of Twitch streaming and one of the guys in my Twitch stream turned around to me and said, oh yeah, that's a really cool piece, why don't you finish that off? And I was like, yeah, that's a good point, why don't I finish it off? Because this piece is a bit of a personal one and maybe that's one of the reasons factoring into why I never really got around to finishing it because this is a bit of a tribute to um, a nephew of mine who passed away a few years ago. Uh, the reason why it's a tribute to him is because we used to call him the Kraken, uh, mainly because he had a bit of a temper on him, my nephew, and his dad used to turn around as a bit of a joke and say, oh bloody hell, someone's released the Kraken every time, um, every time he threw a hissy of some description. So yeah, this was a tribute to him. This is a tribute to my nephew. Um, and it's a very important piece to me and I'm, I'm happy now that I've finished it off. It has a personal connotation. It has a you know a very personal meaning behind it. And um, yeah, and uh, I'd like to share it with you guys now. So that's what we're gonna do. So this is the piece, just opened it up in Procreate now. Uh, like I said, it's called Kraken. And what we're gonna do now is we're gonna go to time-lapse replay. That function that I love so much about Procreate. So, if you just play, there we go. So this is me doing my usual thing where I'm sketching, sketching, sketching. So everything at this stage of the drawing is actually very loose and very flowing because you know it's an undersea creature an octopus. So lots of flowing lines and lots of sketching out and reframe, reframing, recomposing as I want to do. And that's another great thing about working digitally is like you're not constrained. You can, if something is too small, you can reduce it. If something's too big, you can increase it in order to fill the size of the page, which is what I wanted to do with this piece. I wanted to very much fill the page. What, there is a slight difference to the way I did this piece, because like this all starts out, if I punch in, it's still using, like now I'm using pen. This is one of the few ones where I actually use the pencil to draw with rather than just to clean up with. So what I'm doing here now, as you can see, is I'm getting all the details in. And it's still, it's still, at this stage, it's still very loose. You know, there's, there's not a lot in the way of tightening up going on. You know, I'm still kind of trying to figure the piece out more than anything else. And this one wasn't as reference heavy either because like with octopuses, you do have a lot more freedom because of the fact they're so squishy and malleable, shall we say. So in a lot of ways, it makes them quite interesting to draw. They're not as rigid. But then, yeah, if you notice down here, this is where I'm starting to kind of hone in on the details of what I want the te tentacles to look like. And go about, this is another one of these big long drawings. If you actually look, if we hop out of it quickly, just so we can go into the detail, uh, the, um, the statistics. If I go to canvas information, there we go. Um, so yeah, you can see here, Started the piece on the 23rd of December 2019. I only finished it on the 4th of May 2023. So I only finished it about a month ago as of today's date, which is May the 4th for you Star Wars fans. Um, so track time, 56 hours, 36 minutes. <laughs> Why do I do this to myself? I don't know. Um, 45,502 strokes uh, recorded. So yeah. Uh, so anyway, we're gonna hop back into the replay now. So as you can see, I'm like, again, like honing the details. Also, you may notice I don't stick in one position. I, you know, I might work on something over here, like I'm doing there. And that's all the cross hatching. That's kind of the scribbly cross hatching that I do. And literally that's all it is, it's line making. It's crossing everything up and reject. Oh yeah, wait a minute, hold on a second. It looks like I've changed my mind on something, which I have. I think what I think my thinking here was that I wanted the rear section to kind of come in more, so it kind of filled out. It looked a bit more dramatic, maybe. You got to bear in mind that this four years ago, so I'm kind of operating like the creative process is, as you can imagine, quite a malleable one in, in of itself. 
you know, making decisions, changing your mind, that kind of thing. So yeah, again, there's a lot of refinement going on, which is what I try and do. I want my, I want my drawings to look good, as best as I can make them. So a lot of it is just like, yeah, lots of cross hatching, lots of refinement. It's probably one of the reasons why, like, I mean, I've, I've tried my hand at like spray painting and I, quite frankly, I sucked at it. Um, because I could never get a real handle on the accuracy. The one thing I really love about pencils is the point, right? I have utter, utter control about the accurate, of the accuracy of my drawing, whereas with spray paint, I really had trouble with it. I might actually show up now a example of the spray paint I did. This was done on the day after my nephew's passing uh, of a spray paint I did down in the skate park in South London. But this is obviously like, this to me is probably more of a, a better reflection of what I'm capable of doing. Because I like the accuracy. I like, I like drawing. I'm more, if you like, a drawer, a draftsman than a painter. I love the act of drawing. I love, you know, mark making. So my preferred, pen, I, before I started working digitally, my preferred me uh, mediums would be pencils and pens, you know, fine liners, biros, that kind of thing. So again, like I said, a lot of this is refinement, lots of little details. Kind of picking out shapes, picking out everything, doing the eyes. Octopus eyes are weird, man. They just are very, very strange things. And that's the thing, it's like bring up, bring down, bring up, bring down. Like I said to you previously, it's like the great thing about using Procreate is that by using the same brush, I'm able to actually rub out as a way of bringing through highlights, like exposing more of the page, so to speak, and using that as a way of uh, generating my highlights. And it's not something unique to me. A lot of, a lot of people who draw do, you know, do a very similar sort of thing. So as, as you can see, just everything's taking shape now. And what I'm doing here, just, I mean, the things with these suckers, these are really time consuming little fuckers to do, man. Sorry for the language, but you know, it just takes so much time. Like all these little details. That's really the time consuming part, is the details. As you can see, like most of the highlights that I'm bringing up here, you know, they're general shapes more, more than anything else. But it's these little things that you got to really take your time with. And it's the same thing here. Just lots and lots and lots and lots of detail. I mean, it's not real science behind what, what I do, to be perfectly honest. It's just mostly just trial and error and trying things out. You know, and if it doesn't work, you know, don't use it. And if it does work, do. But yeah, getting those little details. Just getting all those tiny little details in. Things, it seems straightforward, especially when you see it in time lapse. It seems fairly straightforward, but it's, it's like the, the length of time it took me to say to draw this tentacle. You probably, I mean, to finish that, I probably took me about two or three hours. Just that bit there. And yeah, that's the drawing. So yeah, that's the piece there. And like I said, I mean, this is a personal piece, you know, and I'm, I'm glad that I finally finished it off. You know, my own procrastination got in the way of me finishing this, but in the end I got it done and I'm happy about it. Um, because this is a tribute to someone who I cared, care about deeply. Not just cared about, but to still care about to this day. You know, there are always times where I'm gonna think about him. I think that's only natural. But yeah, I mean, the fact that he, he will live long in the memory and we will miss him, you know. But without laboring the point or trying to elicit sympathy, which I'm not trying to do, honestly, I just want to talk about, talk to you frankly about why I do what I do and why I express what I express in the mediums that I express them in. And I think that's generally one of the beautiful things about being creative, about being an artist, irrespective of medium. It doesn't matter what you do, whether you spray paint on walls, whether you paint oils on canvas, whether you draw on a glass screen with a plastic stylus you know whatever it is that you do i think there should be something of you in it don't get me wrong i think that you know there's nothing wrong with commercial work if you're doing 
work for the sake of like earning a dollar then or a euro or a pound then by all means do it but the stuff that you do for you like this is the stuff that i've this is a piece that i've done for myself yeah it's it's a it's a personal tribute to someone i care about and i think it's important that you know as a creative if you're able to do that you may not be the best communicator you may not be the best talker but if you can express yourself through whatever medium you choose to i think you should you know don't be don't be scared about making something personal don't be scared about putting a little bit of yourself into the out into the world you don't have to give specifics like i'm not going to give specifics about my nephew because that's personal you know but at the same time if this is my way of honoring him if you're able to do that yourself then you should if you feel like you should can do that then do it whether it's mourning someone whether it's celebrating someone whether it's commemorating a time of your life whether it's um expressing your feelings towards religion or politics or you know there should be something of you in your work i feel i think that's what elevates art you know when you listen to a beautiful piece of music and it makes and it makes you tear up art should elicit something in you it should elicit something not just in the artist but in the viewer now again i've said this before you may not get any of my personal sentiment from this piece but you may derive something of your own derive something completely different right whether you resonate with it or not you know again art is subjective at the end of the day you don't have to like what i do and i don't take it personal you know but if you're creating something yeah don't be shy about putting it. I, th I think what I should basically say, like, just to round it out, don't be scared of putting yourself into your work. Don't be, don't be scared of making it personal, you know, because sometimes, okay, I suppose in this one, it hindered me a little bit in terms of eventually finishing it off, you know, and sometimes that's hard. Sometimes it's hard not to, fit, you know, sometimes you might start something and because of the way it makes you feel, you may not want to finish it off. But you should, man, because there is a sense of reward from it. And like I said, the first person you should be making art for is yourself. You know, because that's where art elevates. You know, that's where art becomes art, if you like, rather than just a drawing or just a piece of music or whatever. You know, if it makes you feel something, then great. And if it makes the viewer feel something, then also brilliant, you know. So yeah, I mean, that's that's the piece. That's Kraken, uh, a bit of a personal one. Um, hopefully, it wasn't too heavy, but you know, this is an important piece to me. You know, and hopefully, you know, if any advice that I give is useful to you, then great. You know, please go out and create art, make art. You know, share it with the world in whatever way you see fit. My name's been John Clare. This has been John Starkart, and you are very welcome. And also, before you go, uh, if you'd like to see this piece in my other works, please go to johnstarkart.com. You can see them all there. Okay? Till next time.